What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Max and today we are checking out the Polestar 1. And well, this car has been around for a couple of years now, two years since 2019, uh, but we never really got around to reviewing it. So today I'm going to show you around it, I'm going to show you all the cool stuff on it, and then we'll take it for a drive towards the Autobahn for an Autobahn Blast. What is it? Well, it is a big plug-in hybrid coupe and it's based on the Volvo coupe concept of 2013 which takes a lot of design elements from the old P1800 which is well honestly one of the most beautiful cars ever made. I have to say I really really like the way this car turned out. I think the design of this car is absolutely spot on because it looks very I don't know it looks very futuristic and classic at the same time. It has this beautiful side profile with these small windows, very narrow, high hips, low roof, long bonnet, short rear. It's, I mean, it's got a very long wheelbase as well. Big doors, it's, yeah, it, it just ticks all the boxes. Uh, I really, really like that. And you definitely do see some hints of Volvo P1800, like these hips that have this super sharp crease and that have this little, I don't know, it just runs all the way from the front to the rear uh, very, very nicely. Now, this is the key, the key fob, which is not great. It's a bit cheap. It does have a Polestar logo right there and a couple of buttons, but I don't know, it rattles. I, I don't really like this. I think it's not really futuristic, this. It looks like something from the mid 90s, um, which is a shame. But at the front, we've got, of course, the Polestar is based on uh, a Volvo platform. So the Volvo ac architecture, you can recognize that uh, by looking at the lights, the grill. There are a few very obvious design giveaways that this is basically a Volvo. But I do like the fact that it does have like its own look go way flies so at the front you can see that we have a, a quite a, a big wide front with some carbon fiber as well here in the grill in the in the lower part of the front bumper with a little extension down there and we've got some fans and radiators in there this color by the way is called osmium there are five colors you can choose from white magnesium osmium blue and black um, the car comes with basically everything as standard. So you can choose the color, you can choose if you want that glossy or matte. You can choose the wheels you want, so there are a couple of different designs and a couple of other things on the interior. But there are very few optional extras on this car. So it comes basically fully loaded and we have the diamond cut wheels today. So the two-tone, very nice 21 inch wheel. And behind that we've got massive brakes for 100 millimeter brake discs at the front 390 at the rear and then we've got these um, aluminium motor block brake calipers so they are cut from one piece of aluminium uh, braking performance is actually pretty darn good so we've got pirelli p0 tires around that and then we've got a little sticker here that says polestar one high modulus cfrp body optimized carbon fiber layout so this car uh, the most of the body is actually made from carbon fiber or carbon fiber reinforced polymer so plastic um, which means that it's a lot lighter than it would be if they use aluminium or steel uh, about 230 kilos lighter than it would be but it's still a very heavy car so it still weighs around 2300 kilos of course because you have all those batteries you have three electric motors one uh, internal combustion engine and then all the other stuff on the car as well so it's quite a heavy car but i do like that you have all these super sharp creases on the design and that's also because this is carbon fiber uh, reinforced polymer so it does look very very handsome and then we've got a carbon fiber tube in here to give it some uh, rigidity some strength and then we've got this panoramic roof as well very nice and you can actually see that this this bonnet which is also cfrp is 
one piece so you can see all the way from there to there this is quite a big thing um, and it it sort of overlaps here as well which is kind of strange on the a-pillar but I do like it with all those creases again it is a beautiful design and then at the rear we've got those C design lights again reminiscent of Volvo lights with a little spoiler here that opens at 100 kilometers an hour and a dual exhaust setup with yeah there are actually two pipes in there but this is basically part of the bumper again and then of course we've got the Polestar logo at the rear as well now normally we head out to the front around this time but I wanted to show you ah we can open the spoiler as well yeah there it goes turn it off again oh <laughs> oh my god the life of a car reviewer okay there we go we'll just leave the car on so there is little spoiler that opens up at 100 kilometers an hour it's quite a good look actually because it's completely flush when you don't need it and then we've got the trunk Uh, which is not very big as you can see there's not that much space um, but i do like that they've exposed part of the system here and you have these cables in the rear that you can look at and uh, that tell you that this is a hybrid car i don't know i, I don't there is no use for it or anything but i do like the, the the look of it i think it's a cool look because you never see this and uh yeah i just like it i think it's cool and then if we open the front you can actually see some uh, carbon fiber there as well to indicate that this is in fact mostly carbon fiber and then uh, there's some carbon fiber in the chassis as well most of it is steel to keep the center of gravity as low as possible and then the upper parts are all carbon fiber to make that as light as possible so that is really smart and then we've got this little carbon fiber air box as well and then of course we've got the engine this is a two liter four cylinder engine uh, turbocharged and supercharged and it delivers 309 horsepower around that and 480 newton meters of torque then we've got uh, an electric motor on the crank which is an integrated starter generator so that's an ISG which means that you can also charge the batteries with the engine and it also delivers a little bit of power directly to the crank and then we've got two electric motors in the rear one for each wheel uh, which works with torque factoring as well which is great and uh, all that together this entire thing delivers 600 horsepower 609 horsepower and uh, a thousand newton meters of torque you have to note that that only happens when you have full power so when you have your batteries charged um, that's when you have that power otherwise you just have 300 around 300 horsepower from this engine and a car that weighs 2300 kilos so if you want performance charge those batteries and then we've got a little giveaway here that this car has some super trick suspension. These are Erlins dampers and they are manually adjustable. Now, as you can see, you can twist them. There are 22 settings and you can twist them left or right, firmer or softer. So one, two, three. Oh, it's, oh, that's, that's just one click. Okay. So one, two, three four five six seven eight nine okay so it was in the middle basically so one two three four five six seven eight nine we'll put it back in the same setting uh, but that is very cool the only problem is at the front it's quite easy to adjust but at the rear you have to remove the inside of the wheel arch and uh, you have to jack the car up and 
get rid of the, the inside of the wheel arch, which is ridiculous. I mean, if you have this type of adjustment, this manually adjustable stuff, that's really cool. I really like that, but it should be very easy to adjust because now, I mean, I'm not going to do that, which is a shame because I would have loved to put all four on the most uh, hard setting, the most firm setting and see what that feels like. But anyway, it is cool that you have it and then you have this strut brace right here. And these Eulens dampers are super high tech. And that's the thing with this car. It's got some really high tech stuff. You got, uh, you've got that, that super smart architecture. The car is on with a dragonfly structure, whatever. Um, you've got all that carbon fiber on the body and you've got this hybrid drivetrain. But then you get in here and you do get some really nice carbon fiber on the doors and on the dash back there as well with a nice chrome strip in there really really beautiful um you've got these bowers and wilkins speakers and the doors as well and on top of the dash absolutely gorgeous then we've got these seats which are great as well with an adjustable front part with these little bolsters for your legs which is really nice and then you look at the rear and it is super small so it's not a two plus two it really isn't uh, this is okay for your kids but that is it because your head will hit this part here and uh, the seat doesn't really go forward so we have this button right here and if i click that the seat will go forward as you can see but it will take a long time so if you crash this car and you have to get out in a hurry i mean yeah don't panic <laughs> Okay, so we've got a... <laughs> what is that called? A guinea pig, right? Parkour! So this is how you get in the back seat of a Polestar 1. <laughs> Fold up <laughs> and fall down. That is absolutely ridiculous. And then you've got no space for your feet or legs. So other than that, well, we can start up the car by hitting that button, twisting it once. Or that turns on the ignition turn it again starts up the car and then we've got a digital dash right there which is well okay not great feels a bit old a bit five years ago and we've got the infotainment system from volvo as well which is i would say is fine i think the screen looks okay uh the frame rate and the resolution is great touchscreen responds fairly quickly actually uh, but it's not really, I don't know, it, it, it's not groundbreaking or anything. And that's the thing that stays with me in here. I do like the design of the interior. I do like all the carbon fiber, but I really hate the steering wheel. I think it looks a bit cheap. And you don't really feel like you're in a halo car, you know. This is supposed to be the Polestar 1, you know. The, the thing that everyone looks up to. Uh, but it's just not that impressive. We've got this crystal gear lever here and then we've got the drive modes down here there are some really nice details in the car the, the leather is nice and soft mostly um, but there are a, a few things that feel a bit cheap as well so we've got a 34 kilowatt hour battery pack as well and that should mean that we are able to do around 125 kilometers fully electric you can drive up to 160 kilometers an hour fully electric and then we have a gearbox here we put that in drive and off we go now we are in hybrid drive mode i believe right now yes we are so that means the car decides what the best way of driving is so you drive off it's electric and then you reach a certain speed and the internal combustion engine switches on now i have to say that when we picked up the car we were a bit underwhelmed we weren't really impressed by how everything feels in here, how it feels when you give it a little bit of throttle. It's mainly electric torque you feel, but the yeah, the, the four cylinder, you don't really feel that. It sounds a bit like a like an old diesel. And altogether, we, we just weren't really impressed with it. And um, then we took it to the Autobahn. I have to say, I do really like the way the car feels. It is very compliant, it is very, comfortable but it just didn't really shine in anything and then we took it to the autobahn and we did a, a crazy nine second 
100 to 200 run, which is really, really quick. That's about the same time as a BMW M850i Coupe, uh, which is very good company to have. So the car is seriously impressive. And when you start really attacking it, so really start using the power, put the car in sport mode as well, power mode, you feel that when everything switches on together, when they all work together, it is a very impressive car. When you shift, the integrated starter generator gives you a little boost of electric power, even if you're just using the petrol engine. And that means that the shifts feel really, really quick because you don't have a drop in torque or power. You know, it just, just keeps going. So you floor it, you shift, there's a very quick shift, even though the shift probably isn't even that quick. Which is super, super smart. Alrighty, so at the Autobahn. I really like the way the car feels. It feels very solid. Kind of reminds me of a Dodge Charger Hellcat, basically. It's, it's that very solid feeling on your steering wheel and of the chassis as well. Now some serious R&D and tech went into this chassis, the suspension, the brakes. It has all been set up to be like on the sporty end of a GT. Holy moly, we're at 240 already? That is quick. <laughs> that is seriously impressive. Um, but we actually saw a video by Misha at Apex uh, Taxi, so at the Nürburgring, and he took one of these around the Nürburgring and he was really impressed with the way it handles. And I really wasn't expecting that to happen. I thought it was going to be basically a Volvo with, you know, a couple of extra things and bits on it. But it seems like they really cared about how this thing handles. Now we've got the suspension, as I showed you, around the middle setting, and that's 255 on the speedo. And the suspension feels really soft now, so as I said, I'm really curious to see what it feels like if you turn it all the way up to the most firm setting. I think it would be a very good car to drive, even though you do have that 2300 kilos, uh, of course. But yeah, you don't really feel that. Maybe that's why it feels so solid, because it's so heavy. So uh, that could be, but I really, really like it. I like the way it handles as well. The, the steering feel is great. I'm just worried about, you know, we've got half a battery left now. The electric range, 125 kilometers is fine, but it's not that much. So I'm a bit worried about how it will work in everyday life. If you drive it, you know, a bit hard, do you have sufficient battery power to keep this power to keep it this fast and this nice because when that power runs out you've got 300 horsepower and a four cylinder on 2300 kilos which is not a lot so yeah i'm curious to see what happens then and if it's still as great but as long as you've got battery i have to say i am quite surprised all right so let's stop here and then we'll do a launch full throttle and the car should be able to do 0 to 100 in 4.2 seconds we've been able to do 4.4 but you know it's a bit greasy a bit moist so I guess 4.2 should be possible but you can see that it it actually is pretty damn quick. And that's the limiter, 250 something, six, I think. So it's limited at 250 kilometers an hour, uh, which is great because Volvo doesn't want you to drive any faster than 180, but apparently Polestar is not that much Volvo, so they do still have a 250 kilometer an hour limit. Now they're going to build 1500 of these. Uh, they're, I think they're almost sold out. They built them from 2019 up until this year, basically.
and as I said it's at the sporty end of a GT car but there is a big problem the price it's 160 grand in the Netherlands um, which you can also buy a BMW M4 for that something like that so it is quite expensive and I don't know if I can forgive it for this cheapish Volvo stuff I don't know if I could get over that if I paid 160,000 euros for this car uh, yeah I, I don't I think I would be hurting a little bit if I look at some of the stuff in here which is a shame because there is a lot on this car that really makes it a halo car I think the drivetrain is one of the biggest surprises for me because I, I thought it was going to be like an XC90 T8 uh, thing that the, the, the Volvo hybrid drivetrains never really impress but it really does in this car um, the design is amazing but yeah there are just a, a few well three one two three is that it I think so but they are three very important things because you look at them all the time so to summarize I really really like this car and I really wasn't expecting that when we picked it up yesterday um, there are a lot of things that are wrong with it it's a lot of hits and a lot of misses that's basically it so in the end the hits outweigh the misses and uh, that's why I kind of go away feeling good about this car I do hope though that this is not a marketing exercise and that Polestar are going to continue building cars like this special cars and cars that take a bit of the Volvo heritage and just run with it because at least this is an exciting car and you really can't say that about Volvo anymore uh, I, I can't remember the last exciting car Volvo made yeah the V60 Polestar but was that really exciting I don't know it's been a long time and this really did something special for them so I hope they will continue to do stuff like this in the future so that's it for this review I hope you enjoyed it you can subscribe by clicking the big button in the middle you can also check out this video on the right or go check out this playlist on the left thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next one bye